Today, I'll be speaking to Craig Goldberg about sound vibrations and mindfulness. Let me briefly introduce him before I bring him on. Craig is a relaxation expert as well as a certified vibroacoustic therapy practitioner on a quest to help humanity achieve a deeper sense of inner calmness through the use of sound and vibration technology. He operates with roots in science and technology and his work is backed by 40 plus years of research showing the many benefits of this type of therapy. He's constantly exploring new ways to use vibroacoustics to help people reduce stress and anxiety, heal and transform their lives for the better. His journey began 10 years ago when his wife got sick and modern medicine did not have answers, so he did what many of us would do, he began searching. His journey has taken him down many roads in search of one thing, how to live a healthy life. Hi, Craig. Thank you for joining us today on the Mental Health Break podcast. Super grateful to be here. Thanks so much, Doc. I just did a brief introduction, but can you tell us a little bit about what you do, who you help, and what your passion is? I help people relax using sound and vibration. It seems like a pretty broad and very simple thing all at the same time. And yet, as I travel around the world and, and I share with people that that's what I do, they're, inevitably their response is, oh my gosh, I need that. Or, oh, that sounds amazing. Or tell me more. And I think the reality is, particularly here in the United States, we kind of wear busyness as a badge of honor. And we stack our calendars with things to do. I, I do this as well, by the way. I'm definitely not perfect and still very much working on working relaxation into everything that I do, but that's not really the point, right? The point is to have times where you're on and active and then have times where you're resting and relaxing. And our nervous system is built the same way. So my passion is to teach, train, and educate folks on exactly what's happening within your brain, your body, your nervous system, how sound and music impacts positively our physiology. And with the right intention, we can use sound and vibration to reach relaxation states deeper, faster, more often that will then carry over and condition us to be more cool, calm and relaxed throughout the entire day instead of being more stressed and anxious, being more calm and relaxed. Wow, we need that so much these days. I know that a lot of people feel overwhelmed just hearing about stress management or feeling calm. Because like you said, a lot of us or society encourages us to be as busy as possible, as productive as possible. And yet so many of us are struggling with all kinds of health issues because we do have too much stress. But I also want to mention that we're not saying to eliminate all stress because we need stress in our lives. We need inflammation in our lives. We need all of this stuff. But it's a matter of how much and how much control we have over it. So can you say a little bit about... Um, just what are some simple things that people can do on a daily basis that can help them feel more in control? And then we can get into like the other things that they can add on to improve their health. Yeah. Look, you hit the nail on the head. We need stress, right? So even working within harmony in our technology, it's not going to remove the stress. It's not actually going to change the outside stressors that trigger the stress. What it's going to change is how your body is conditioned to show up in times of stress it's going to allow you to be maintain a parasympathetic nervous system response which is calm and relaxed in the face of what otherwise would have triggered you weeks or months before or even days or hours before depending on how um how you're using our technology but the whole purpose and the whole point is to condition the body just like an elite athlete conditions their body to handle the rigors that they put themselves through day in and day out so too does training and conditioning the nervous system to stay calm and relaxed allow you to not go into that stressed state often and instead look if somebody fires a gun 10 feet from you your nervous system is going to react and we want it to we don't want it you don't want to just be like oh hmm. however if you were in the military and you were used to guns being fired in your near vicinity bullets flying by your head that same gunshot in say a park or a mall god forbid or or something in the normal day to day would affect me as a civilian differently than it would affect somebody that's been in the military that's been trained in those situations very much we're taking the same approach with your nervous system we are training and conditioning your nervous system to spend more time in parasympathetic or calm and relaxed and allowing those external stimuli to not trigger that sympathetic nervous system response. Because when you're in a sympathetic nervous system response, your body turns off digestion, it turns off reproduction, it turns off 
your immune system. It turns off rational thinking. You literally go into a fight or flight. You literally go into this survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, you're just not equipped to handle the day-to-day -day trials and tribulations that life throws at us. And far too many people are, are in a stressed state from the time they wake up until the time they go to bed, day after day, week after week, month after month. So we want to work to combat that. And then to your question, simple things that you can do are, I always come back to the breath. The first thing is to have awareness that you are in a stressed state. And to better understand what the trigger is to that stress state, is it a significant other doing something that just always bothers you and they're not getting it right? Is it a situation you're having at work? Is it a job you hate? Is it, right? What is it that triggers that stressed state? And once you're aware of that, then you can begin to do something to combat it. And for me, the easiest thing is the breath. Notice when you're stressed and anxious, you're likely breathing short, shortness of breath. You're typically have shallow breath. So the first thing that you can do is to actually take a nice deep breath. I'm a little stuffed up. I've been fighting off a little head cold, but a nice deep breath and hold and a nice slow exhale. And the breath controls the mind, the mind controls the body. So this gives you a very easy, um, a very easy move to just begin to slow down and recognize that you're in that stressed state. From there, you can begin to build on it. And in Harmony has both a record label and then hardware and actual furniture that is built specifically to help you relax using sound and vibration. So it starts first with our app, which is available in the app store. And we have these different music meditations. And I was actually just on my sound lounge um, literally until two minutes before I hopped on this call. And, and I was doing a sound lounge session to just try and cleanse and clean up my nose and relax my face and help with some of that lymphatic drainage. But we have all of these different music meditations. And each one of these blocks is a new track or a different music meditation that you can listen to. And they cover a variety of different topics and emotional feelings and intentions. So the easiest thing to do after the breath is if you've got an, uh, a smart device to download our app and begin listening to our music meditations using a set of headphones or even just through the speaker on your phone. Uh, and then, of course, the upgrade from there is to invest in our furniture, our In Harmony Meditation Cushion, the In Harmony Sound Lounge 2, the In Harmony Practitioner 2, or the In Harmony Massage Table, which has specific technology built into it that delivers sound and frequency directly to the body as you're listening to it. So not only are you hearing the frequencies and the music meditations, but you're also feeling them through every single cell in your body. And this creates a three-dimensional, fully immersive experience that triggers the chemical cascades associated with being calm and relaxed, sends a message to every muscle in your body telling it to relax, overriding the messaging from the nervous system and saying, hey, muscles, it's time for you to relax for a little bit, therefore releasing tension and, um, and, and possibly releasing strain around a, an old injury. Um, it increases circulation. It helps with lymphatic drainage, as I mentioned. Um, it helps with circulation as well. So there's a number of physiological benefits that you begin to pick up when you couple our music meditations with our hardware, with our furniture that we manufacture. So before we get into all of that, I know that because you and I are in this field, we hear a lot about parasympathetic nervous system or nervous system in general. We hear a lot of those things, which can become jargon for the average listener, right? Yeah. So can you I know that maybe this is a second language issue for me, but when I, I had such a hard time distinguishing between sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system and just understanding how my nervous system worked. Can you explain that a little bit? Like, I think you mentioned that the fight or flight, but even that can be a vague term for some people yeah. uh, because a lot of us, we're not really focused on our body. We're not paying attention to whether we're breathing or not. We're not paying attention to whether we're in a state of fight or flight. So can you yeah. talk a little bit about that, about how the average person that might not be familiar with these terms can begin to pay attention more. And I know you mentioned training the body, but really, I mean, it's just a practice. It's not a con conditioning sounds so overwhelming, like, oh my gosh, I have to like go and do this, these series of exercises. But can you just kind of break that down a little bit about what? Absolutely. And, and by the way, a great question. And yes, you and I are in this industry and it is something that we're talking about on a regular basis. Um, no, actually, and, and just to really touch on the last part of what you said, 
using our technology, listening to our music meditations, it is literally the most calming and relaxing thing that you can do. <laughs> it is soothing. It is easy. It feels fantastic. It tickles every cell in your body. Like this is a pleasurable experience. Uh, it very, very much unlike working out or cold plunging or even getting in a sauna, which I happen to love to do. I happen to love cold plunging too, but I'm weird like that. Um, quite the opposite. This is something that is designed to be fun, feel amazing and be very relaxing. I mean, that's the whole point, as we had mentioned. Our nervous system has three different main states, if you will. Um, sympathetic, parasympathetic and neural hormonal. We hear a lot about sympathetic and parasympathetic. Neural hormonal is like our backup system. And there are ways that we can actually measure this using heart rate variability and various biosensors, biometric sensors that we can put on the body. But HRV is my favorite. And we can actually test through short and, and very small stimuli. And this isn't something that InHarmony does, but I have a piece of hardware um, from another manufacturer that makes an HRV system that actually... You, you attach it to each wrist, and over the course of 300 heartbeats, which takes about five minutes, the software is stimulating your nervous system. You don't feel it, you don't recognize it, but it's stimulating your nervous system and identifying exactly how fast your body moves from parasympathetic, calm and relaxed, to sympathetic, stressed and anxious. And, and to dive deeper into this, and then of course, neural hormonal is your backup systems. It's it's how often is your body reaching into the backup storage of energy and how often is it reaching into the depths of your energy limits, if you will, or energy storage. Most of the time we're focusing our attention on sympathetic and parasympathetic. Again, two medical terms, if you will, about the nervous system and the state in which you're in, but it's really just describing a series of chemical cascades that are happening in the body, all of which is triggered by your nervous system, all of which is for the most part involuntary and happens without your thought and without your conscious application towards it. I'll give a great example. If you were a rabbit and you were sitting in a field eating a carrot or some grass or whatever it is that carrots eat, they that, that rabbit will often find itself in a dead sprint running in a direction before it cognitively realizes exactly what's happening. And the, the reason for that is because its nervous system detected danger, a fox, a predator, an owl, an eagle, whatever it might be. And it, it reacts instantaneously. So our nervous systems do the very same thing. Our nervous systems are fed through our five senses, touch, taste, smell, hearing, sight, right? So through the five senses, our nervous system is constantly evaluating our environment. And when it evaluates a threat, and this is the part that I think is really detrimental, and this is where I think the conditioning really starts to come in. As your nervous system identifies a threat, it begins to shift you into a sympathetic nervous system response, otherwise known as fight or flight. Another great way to explain this as a human example is if you go camping, I love to go camping. I love to sleep in a tent. And often I will hike and go as far away from humans as I possibly can. And if I'm laying in my tent and I know I'm the only human around for miles, and all of a sudden I'm laying in my tent in the middle of the night and I hear a stick crack outside, I now recognize. And a lot of times I will wake up from a dead sleep because I heard that. My body and my nervous system evaluated that that's a predator and it's big enough to break a stick. I should probably perk up. Where's my food? Where's my self-defense weapon? What's going on outside my tent? Do I go outside or do I sit here and, and, and continue to evaluate this situation? My body and my nervous system now shifts me from calm and relaxed, sleeping and relaxing in my tent, enjoying the, the sounds of, of the forest or wherever I am. And now all of a sudden I'm in sympathetic. My body goes into fight or flight. My body goes into survival mode. My body goes into a mode that says, I need to defend myself from a threat. That is happening. Now, if I'm in my tent and a stick breaks, that's great. That's exactly how that nervous system response is supposed to happen. Here's what happens when that, when that happens. My brain and my nervous system releases cortisol and adrenaline into my bloodstream. The cortisol wakes me up and makes me hyper-focused on whatever that noise, whatever that situation is, whatever is happening in front of me. 
the adrenaline actually diverts energy from maintenance tasks in the body, like um, digesting food, defending uh, and combating against bacteria and viruses, my immune system, reproductive organs, doing all of the maintenance tasks, killing off old cells, autophagy, and taking care of maintaining the body, cellular support, as well as rejuvenation. And it diverts that energy to the major muscle groups of the body, quads, think quads, hamstrings, back, chest, right? So that I can either fight or I can run. And I want to make sure, my nervous system wants to make sure that my body has everything available to it to defend myself. Now, that's great if it's a broken stick and, and a predator that's outside my tent that I need to go defend myself. Unfortunately, that same nervous system response happens when I check my phone before I go to bed and I get an email from my boss that, oh, just eats me alive. And now I don't have to be up at 6 a.m. I need to be up at 4 a.m. to go take care of something before work, right? Or, or whatever the case might be, a situation where maybe you're in sales and marketing and you lose a deal or you didn't get a bid on a contract, right? Now, when I read that email right before I go to bed, the body only has one response to that threat. And by the way, missing a bid or getting a decline on an application or getting an email from your boss that, that you don't like, um, all of those can be life-threatening situations. However, not the same life-threatening situation as, as a predator being outside your, your tent, right? Somebody knocking on your door, maybe, but just a, a financial can absolutely be an existential, existential threat on your life, but your body only has one response, and that is to invoke the sympathetic nervous system response, the cortisol, the adrenaline, turning off. It All of this happens regardless. Now, with cortisol and adrenaline flowing through your blood at 11 o'clock at night as you're drifting off to sleep, you can bet you're going to have a hard time falling asleep. Your body is now keeping you awake and focused on that situation at hand. So when we spend a lot of time in a sympathetic nervous system response, um, that's when we really start to be debilitated day in and day out. And when we stack days, weeks, and months in that sympathetic nervous system response, that's when we really start to identify and develop chronic ailments, chronic issues. Um, it doesn't matter how organic or how clean your diet is. If you're in a sympathetic nervous system response, you're not digesting your food properly. It doesn't matter how keen your immune system is. If you're in a sympathetic nervous system response, your immune system is not fighting viruses and bacteria. It's turned off. So many people I know are trying to get pregnant and they live stressful lives. Your reproductive organs are not working when you're in a sympathetic nervous system response. Rational thinking is not turned on when you're in a sympathetic nervous system response. So I really believe we have the biggest and largest pandemic, and that is anxiety, depression, mental health, and, and this stress inducing lifestyle that we live, we really need tools to combat that. And, and this is exactly where in harmony comes into play and exactly why I love appearing and sharing uh, this knowledge with folks just like you and your audience, obviously, because it's, it's exactly the place where I want to be having these conversations. Yeah, you did mention that it affects everything. And we're not, you mentioned the, the rabbit earlier and how it can run away but it can also have time to kind of once it's safe to reset its system Ooh. but a lot of us don't have that we need at least two to four hours to reset our system back up to, or for our digestion to come back on you you know one real quick on this human beings are the only animal on the planet the only animal on the planet that concerns itself with the happening after it happens that rabbit right? That just saved its own life because it jetted away, right? And now is no longer in danger. Isn't thinking about how close of a call that was. Yeah. Isn't thinking, right? They might be thinking I'm not going back there to eat that carrot, but I bet you it is. I bet you it's thinking, is the coast clear? Do I smell or see anything? No, I don't. I'm going back to get that carrot. It's not thinking about how poor of a decision it was to go eat that carrot. It's not contemplating why it was such a bad idea for it to go eat that carrot. It is simply moving on with life. And um, human beings tend to dwell on the past and, and think about and try and predict a future that hasn't happened yet. And that's where we get hung up in stress, anxiety, and, and depression, of course, as well. Right. And a lot of animals are able to shake off whatever like 
stress that was in their body, they're able to get it out of their body one way or another while we hold on to it. And then we beat ourselves up and we end up having thinking about it over and over again. And then it just builds up. So we never really get into that state of calm. Like I had this experience in college where I'm sure all of us had that experience where our body kept it together until uh, winter break. And as soon as we took our finals, we would get sick because our body kept it together. And then all of a sudden it, we would just. I'm a perfect example of this. I have been pushing myself and pushing myself and pushing myself. I also have a three and a half year old. Um, I'm not sleeping. I'm, I'm just not sleeping and, and I'm working on it every day. But the reality is my wife and I get to trade. Okay, you're going to sleep tonight and I'm going to tend to our daughter and then she's going to sleep tonight, right? Like, so I know it full on. And, um, and Friday night, it just all caught up with me. Friday morning, I was starting to mm-hmm. feel congested and I knew I needed rest and I knew I needed to take care of myself. And I've been spending more time on the sound lounge and in front of my red light therapy and doing, I just got an IV, you know, all the different things that we have to help ourselves rejuvenate and get back to, uh, get back to baseline. Well, this is why we need to make the time to meditate, to be more mindful, to breathe even. I mean, such a simple thing, but a lot of us go throughout the day, shallow breathing from our chest. We're not taking the time to even do a one minute deep breathing exercise. And so we are not allowing our body that opportunity to rest. And then we get mad at ourselves. Why is it that we're getting sick? Why is it that we're not as productive? Why is it that we have anxiety? And so um, I did want to just mention that, that animals can just shake it off and move on, but we can prolong that stress moment unless you take the time to, to do things that are going to be healing for you. Indeed. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. The body gives you a nice reminder. I do want to touch on something. It's a little bit off topic, but I want to touch on how powerful our words are. And I actually, I am not sick right now. Um, I don't like You're that. You're healing. Ah, uh, yeah. So I knew you'd know it, right? Um, but I think this is really important. And um, our words, our website is I am in harmony. And the reason Dom and my, my business partner and I chose that web URL is because the two most powerful words in the English language are I am. Anything that follows after it, you are. So you really need to be careful. I am sick is telling your brain, your body, and your your being that you are sick. When when the reality, the opposite is really the reality. And, and this is something that I think we've kind of skipped a beat with, if you will. The symptoms that I'm showing right now is actually my immune system operating exactly the way it was beautifully designed to operate. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the nasal passage that's stuffed up is designed to keep out more, um, uh, more viruses and more bacteria. The cough that I have is designed to clear and cleanse my, my breathing, uh, you know, passageways, the fever. I don't, I, I didn't have a fever, but if I were to get a fever, the first thing we do is reach for Tylenol or, or ibuprofen to break the fever. The reality is my immune system, my defense mechanisms are raising the temperature in my body to slow down the replication of that virus so that the white blood cells in my body can go and, and kill it off and really defend itself. So what we're really doing is, is a lot of times we're, we're cutting our, ourselves off at the knees to defend ourselves by using statements like that. When in, when in reality, my ner- my, my immune system is really just showing off its ability to, to heal itself and to take care of itself. Um, which is why I'm still here, which is why I still show up, which is why I'm doing all the things to benefit my my nervous system, including infrared saunas, which raises my core body temperature, which further helps my body to defend itself, um, including infrared heat, red light therapy, um, and of course, um, sound and vibration as well. So I am, um, especially this time of year, a lot of people are running around going like, I'm sick or you're sick. And, and it's it's a very, no, 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 no. I am healthy and I'm showing off my body's natural ability to defend itself. And it is perfect. I think if we have that mindset of I'm healing, then we will do whatever whatever it takes to heal our, or support our body to do the healing, like yeah. not take the Tylenol to cut off that the fever because the fever is meant to help us. Um, so I'm glad that you brought that up. It's not just our thoughts. It's the things that we do to sabotage ourselves as well. There's a And there's a time and a place for it. 
right? Uh, modern medicine is miraculous. Even pharmacology is absolutely incredible. Where where I think we start to run into issues is when we're where the prescription or the diagnosis is for life. Hey, you're going to be taking this for the rest of your life. And it's like, whoa, 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 right? Even, look, I took an antihistamine a couple days ago, right? Um, because I was stuffed up and and I, I was far more stuffed up than I am right now on, on Saturday. And I've got a three and a half year old who doesn't give me a break, right? I can't ask for a PTO day on being a dad, right? So, um, so I took an antihistamine so that my head cleared a little bit. And then I could figure out why I felt this way. All right, I'm run down, I'm exhausted, right? I can treat that with a good night's sleep, with a sound lounge session with, and I said to my wife, hey, I need rest. And she was like, I was in bed, I think at 6 p.m. on Saturday night, right? So giving ourselves the opportunity to treat, not treat the symptom, but to figure out what's going on with us in the first place, and then using and leveraging modern medicine as needed. Um, look, I, I keep Zithromax here at my house. I haven't needed to take it, but in the event that I need to take it, I, I would. And then I would reseed my gut biome with pre and post, uh, pro, pre and post postbiotics. Um, and, and I would get those going so that I could reseed it if I had to. Um, there's, there's definitely a time and a place for modern medicine. And I think that that's really important. A lot of folks think, particularly when they hear me speak that I'm not a fan of modern medicine. I prefer to go homeopathic. I prefer to go to essential oils and alchemy and herbs first, but there's absolutely a time for modern medicine when it's needed. And, um, and I think that's really important, especially given the last four years of our, of our lives. I'm glad you brought that up because I am the same way. I, I would prefer to do the least harm first and then yeah. go for medication as needed. This is a great transition into in harmony and why I chose this business, right? As an entrepreneur, as a health nut and fanatic, um, I, I study not just our physiology, but my wife and I have a, another company called Gold Zulu Incorporated, which is really a consulting agency that's focused on helping people to identify and clear, cleanse and detoxify what they put in their mouth, what you put on your skin and what you allow to be kept in the air around you. And, and as you start to clean up your environment, your body begins to perform better. But the reality is the body is constantly picking up on toxic load and constantly um, giving it, uh, uh, getting rid of it. And the process of getting rid of it sounds and feels like this, right? right. Like 12 years ago when my wife got sick and, and we catalyzed this whole big change, um, it wound up the reason for her ailment, the cause was gluten and gluten sensitivity. And we removed gluten from her diet and my diet 100%. Over the next six months, she got better and I got worse. And I couldn't figure out why I sounded like this for like six months. Mm -hmm. I had a low grade fever that came and gone. I had a cough that wouldn't go away. I had a, a runny nose and a stuffed nose and nasal passage that I couldn't get rid of. And it went on for like nine months. And at the end of it, when I finally started to clear everything up, I realized that it was in response to the toxic load. My body was no longer distracted by the inflammatory response that the gluten was causing. And now all of a sudden it ran through a detox protocol and it took six to nine months for my for my body to get rid of all of that. And, and I sounded like this the entire time. And then I was, and I was great. And now probably once a year, once every two years, something comes over me that I need to help and support, that I need to combat and that I need to get after. And and I give myself that time. I say, okay, it's time for me to rest. It's time for me to relax. The sound lounge and the reason why I'm involved in vibroacoustic therapy is because relaxing the nervous system and giving ourselves an opportunity, it's like a pressure release valve. Life is busy. I'm not, I, I open by saying, you know, hey, we kind of wear that as a badge of honor. The reality is there are far too many things to get done in a single day if you're an upstanding American taking care of all the things you need to. Taxes, registrations, bills need to get paid, things need to happen. Like, there's just a lot to do. And I don't know if that's ever going to stop. All right? My father slipped and fell this morning. Uh, that's, I gotta, I don't have to deal with anything. He's fine. But like, things are going to happen that are going to throw a wrench in your otherwise normal day. And how we respond to that is a decision. Viktor Frankl had a great quote in his book. And basically his quote was, in between a stimuli and a reaction, there is a pause, there is a break. And it's in that pause that we get to decide how we're going to react to that stimuli. And the more you use our technology, 
particularly sound and vibration, the more you slow down, the more you teach and train your nervous system to be calm and relaxed, the better you're going to be in reacting to those stimuli as they come up, which will inevitably come up. One thing you mentioned about getting sick, a lot of people that claim that they brag about not ever getting sick. It's like we need to pe keep being exposed to things so that our, our immune system gets a workout and strengthens. Of course. And so if we do have one to two times, and this is what I want to kind of convey with that is that it's normal for us to be sick once or twice a year. And that doesn't mean we have to quickly suppress all the symptoms in order to keep moving. Give your body the time to rest. Give your body the time to heal. And that's what you need to focus on. But you had brought up this, the sound vibrations. How is the sound bowl or sound baths different? And how are they the same as far as what they do for the body and the healing that, it, that can happen from it? Yeah, those acoustic instruments are fantastic. It's actually where my roots are. Um, it's how I was first introduced to sound therapy and music therapy and vibration therapy. It's the same body of research that governs what we do as do the acoustic instruments, the bells, the chimes, the didgeridoo, the gong. These are all vibratory instruments that create a frequency. That frequency is then projected onto the body through pressure waves, otherwise sound waves, and the body picks up on those sound waves. Sitting in a sound bath is very similar to laying on a sound lounge. There's a couple main differences. Laying on our sound lounge, our meditation cushion, massage table, practitioner, when you're using in harmony technology, you are amplifying the signal. You are, in essence, laying in a louder version, a more powerful version of those instruments. Even if you're standing, I've stood in front of an 84 inch, that's like my entire wingspan, an 84 inch pasty gong. It is the most wonderful and amazing experience. Even laying in, in standing, because it's hanging, standing in front of that gong, I've been inches from it. Even standing in front of that gong, laying on the sound lounge is still a more powerful experience. And the gong is the most complex frequency or one of the most complex frequency generators on the planet. When you're laying on the sound lounge, because it's amplified, because it's powered, there's two things that happen. First of all, you push the button, you lay down, and you have your experience. You don't have to play. You don't have to stay focused on doing something, you can allow your body, close your eyes, drift into an alpha, theta, delta, gamma brainwave state, and actually reap the benefits of that instrument. The second is it's amplified. And because it's amplified, because it's more powerful, it brings on and introduces physiological benefits that are present when you're in front of the gong, but are stronger and more powerful when you're laying on our tech. And that has to do with circulation. It has to do with the nervous system. It has to do with um, lymphatic drainage and, um, and, and activating the lymph, the lymphatic system. So there's a lot of benefits that come very similar. Also, absolutely amazing. I have hand pans. I have, I have bowls here in my house. Um, in harmony was actually thinking about creating our own line of crystal bowls. Um, we still might do that in 2024, um, beautiful instruments and absolutely breathtaking and incredible. The downside is you have to play it or you have to bring somebody in to play it for you. Um, versus getting on the sound lounge and pushing play and then having your experience. So for me, over the course of my day, when I'm working in my home office by myself pretty much all day, I love the idea of being able to go and lay or sit on a meditation cushion and have that, that therapy experience, have that therapeutic experience. How does the whole sound vibration affect us as far as helping us feel better? Uh, and how does it help in, in healing us? Because I know that there's the sound bath and sound vibrations and all of that, and even your technology. It's a new thing that's, that a lot of people are using now. I mean, but a lot of us don't know too much about it. Can you explain how the vibrations and the sounds help heal us and what is the science behind that? Yeah, so the science is very much focused on pulling you back into that parasympathetic nervous system response. I mean, that's the, the simplest and easy way for me to explain it. And just how detrimental it is to our overall health to be in fight or flight or to be stressed and anxious all day long. When you're stressed and anxious, as we talked about at the beginning of this interview, when you're stressed, when it's in survival mode, it turns off the maintenance tasks. So it's not dealing with autophagy, which is killing off dead cells or malfunctioning cells. It's not it's not doing the, the maintenance tasks in the body. Your immune system can be deactivated. Your digestion can be deactivated. So 
when you're in that that fight or flight mode, that survival mode, your body is just not maintaining itself. And what happens when you drive a car that you're not running regular maintenance on? It starts to break down. It starts to have issues. Regular maintenance is important to maintain the life of any system. And the human body is no different. So laying in a sound bath in front of these acoustic instruments, laying on top of the sound lounge, the massage table, sitting on our meditation cushion, listening to music meditations is a daily maintenance for you to bring your body into a calm and relaxed state, for you to bring your body into a parasympathetic nervous system response and allow your body to maintain itself. Allow your body to go through the checklist that it needs to go through to keep itself tip top. And that's the biggest and most important aspect of this whole conversation. If you're stressed and anxious, your body's in survival mode, you're not taking care of your body the way that internally, I mean, not even, not even consciously, your subconscious body is not taking your mind is not taking care of your body. When you're in parasympathetic, when you're calm and relaxed, which is the state you get into when you're in harmonic resonance with these incredible instruments, that's when your body is maintaining itself and taking care of itself. So would you say this is a reset that, that, that two to four hour reset that our body needs? Is this helping with resetting our sympathetic yeah. nervous system? Absolutely. In fact, we can actually get you back into a, in a parasympathetic nervous system response within 60 minutes. So again, we are trigger. It takes about 15 minutes to trigger the chemical cascades associated with parasympathetic. And then it takes some time for the body to start to come in. But right away, you notice it right away. When you lay down on the sound lounge, the conscious whoa feeling that cognitive realization of what you're experiencing happens right away you immediately feel every muscle in your body start to tickle and the sound vibrations themselves are sending a message to every muscle in your body telling it to relax overriding the electrical signals from the nervous system in the brain which might tell it to tense up and tighten in that stressed and anxious mode which you're dissolving and releasing the cortisol and the adrenaline from your bloodstream, which brings the body into a relaxed state. You feel it right away. In fact, most people, when I push play on the first track that they listen to, a, a lot of times I'll hear, whoa, or ooh, or a smile, or, or a, that's cool, right? And we've got lots of video on our Instagram and TikTok of, of people's first reactions because of that. It feels fantastic. And I think that's really important. I consider myself a biohacker. I consider myself somebody that wants to give my body the best edge to feel its best. And that includes cold therapy. It includes cold showers and cold plunges. Not fun. I don't care how often you're doing it. It's not fun to put the body through that. I do it for the mental stability of, of this is happening and we're going to do it for the cold shock proteins and all the things that are happening when I'm, when I'm submerging myself in cold water. It's not fun. Quite the contrast, sound lounge is fun. It feels amazing. It's relaxing. It's soothing. Um, it's great with friends and family. And uh, and it's even more beautiful to be able to share that experience with somebody, which obviously I get to do day in and day out. Well, that sounds amazing. It's a great transition into where can people find out more about this product? Where can people find out more about you and connect with you? Absolutely. And I appreciate that, Doc. So our website, I am in harmony, I-A-M-I-N-H-A-R-M-O-N-Y just like it's written back there, IamInHarmony.com. That's our website. Um, you can also find us on all of the social networks. We're on YouTube, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we were on Pinterest. Um, you name it, we're pretty much there. To talk about the conversation around relaxation, we're on LinkedIn as well. And I am the human being on the other side of the comments and the DMs. My phone number is actually at the top of my website. So if you want to talk specifically about your situation, if you've got a question about how our technology might be able to interact in your world, I would love to connect with you. And I am super grateful for this opportunity, Doc. Thank you so much for having me here and allowing me to share this message and hopefully teach your community a little bit more about relaxation and anxiety. And, and I've been listening to your podcast, so I know you do a beautiful job of doing that. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I will share all that information in your show notes. And I appreciate the, the conversation and having this talk because it's always good to learn more about this stuff, about Indeed. alternative ways. I'm also a big fan of uh, life hacking. And so always learning to improve our lives in, any, in all these different ways is a wonderful thing. So thank Indeed. you. You're so welcome. Have a beautiful day.